Good morning, YouTubers. Uh, I got a little special treat this week. Friday is Good Friday. Um, we're living in some crazy times right now. Uh, Friday marks two occasions. One, my wife has been off work for an entire month uh, due to the global pandemic. And two, it's Easter. Good Friday. So, uh, I'm headed into work this morning. The restaurant's been open. Uh, dining room's closed, but we're open for uh, delivery and curbside pickup. Basically, you call us, we put it in your trunk, and then you can grab it. So, contactless uh, delivery service from us. Um, so, I've been working, but Amanda has not. Uh, but we reached out, uh, the restaurant market reached out to the Ronald McDonald House. And we want to donate Easter dinner for those families that uh, can't get out, can't go get away from there. Um, so today I'm headed into work and I've got some lamb shanks coming in from uh, Unique Farms in Alberta here. Get it? Unique. I'll put, the, uh, I'll put their title up on the screen because it's quite funny. Um, but yeah, I got some lamb shakes coming in. So we're going to show you guys how to prep up a, a lamb dinner for Easter. Um, I do have some other videos in the works. I was going to launch a different one on Friday, but I figured with what's happening out there, everything's been a bit topsy-turvy and a bit crazy that maybe I should throw in a nice heartfelt uh, Easter video here. Uh, it'll mostly be me cooking and prepping in the kitchen, so another mise en place series video. But uh, I hope you guys like it, and let's, uh, let's get down there and into the kitchen and start cooking up some beautiful lamb shakes. Just because we're out here doesn't mean we can't be civilized. And our thyme. I'll put those together. I'll just mix them all up. Okay, we got uh, carrots, onions, and celery. We're gonna chop up to place as a base underneath the lamb shanks when we're roasting them off. With some oil to help color them. This mirepoix, as we call it in the kitchen, um, acts as flavor. It's aromatics. So this will help with the braising liquid, flavoring it. And then once we're done braising it, we're going to turn that into a sauce. So it all starts right here with the mirepoix, carrots, onions, and celery. Okay, so we've got our Dijon. Throw a Dijon in a bowl to make life easier. Our herbs all tossed up, salt and pepper ready to go. So we'll do these guys one at a time here. A little bit of mustard on one. Pepper, salt, some herbs. Did you get a couple in this bowl? make life a lot easier and we'll just stack them up in there you want to roast your shanks in the oven at uh, 500 degrees for about 30 minutes or until they're nice and brown so we're gonna throw crushed tomatoes in here first get our crushed tomatoes going and then our beef stock if you don't have a beef stock, you can, uh, a, lamb sh a lamb stock would be best, but we don't have a lamb stock here at the restaurant, so you're going to want to use a beef stock. Uh, if you don't have a stock, you can go get some bouillon or water will work as well. And uh, then we're going to add some red wine. The red wine, um, basically it's one to one to one. So one red wine, one beef stock, one crushed tomato. That's your ratio you're looking for. And uh, throw some bay leaves in here as well. And get that boiling, reduce a little bit while our shanks are roasting. Look at those. Those look great. So these beautiful lamb shanks. Uh, 
nice and roasted. We'll just uh, place them in these hotel pans here so that we can uh, braise them overnight in the oven. We're going to go slow and low. Um, I'm going to, again, build on all those flavors. So those flavors are going to help us braise the lamb shanks. Okay, let's not forget the liquid that's in here. Split that up between the two. Then we'll pour the hot liquid over the shanks, throw it in the oven overnight, and let them braise nice and slow. We're gonna set this oven for 225, and we're gonna cook them for about six hours. And then uh, we'll take them out, and we'll let them cool completely in the, uh, in the liquid, the braising liquid that they're in. So gratin potatoes are similar to scallop potatoes. We're gonna use russets, yellow onions, carrots, uh, some grated cheese, salt and pepper, of course, to season it corn starch to bind it with cream and uh, roasted garlic just to add an extra punch of flavor to these. Okay, so we're gonna slice up our potatoes, our carrots and our onions. I'm nice and thin. I'm gonna use a food processor to do it. You can use a mandolin or a knife, but I need to speed things up. I'm cooking for 60 people. Once you've got your potatoes carrots and onions all sliced up, you're gonna to wanna to mix them real good in a bowl. Just to kinda of spread it all out amongst everything. Mix it by hand, don't use a, a mixer. You just break the potatoes apart, but you want these nice pieces of potato. So it's gonna give us our layers. Into your cream, we're gonna add our roasted, chopped up roasted garlic and our salt and pepper, and we're just gonna give that a really good whisk before we pour it over our sliced up potatoes, carrots, and onions. And now before we pour our cream over top of our potatoes, we're gonna dust them with cornstarch. Give that a really good mix up. The cornstarch is gonna act as the binder. When we cool this overnight tonight, it's gonna help press it all together and keep it as one solid piece instead of falling apart. Once the cream gets in here, it's gonna help disperse the cornstarch, but we wanna give it a running start. Mix it up nice. And we're gonna pour our cream over top. Some roasted garlic in there. And last, the mixed cheese. Give it one last good mix by hand here. Then we're gonna get it set up in a, a baking pan for the oven. Go. So fill the pan with your potato mixture. Make sure you get everything in there. Push down nice, level and even. Pouring all the remaining ingredients out of your bowl. Spread nicely over the top. Clean your rims up and we'll wrap it, get it ready for the oven. We're gonna cook it at uh, 350 degrees for one hour then we're gonna turn it down to 325 for one more hour and then we're gonna show you how to set it up in your fridge to cool overnight so you can cut it out make it look pretty tomorrow okay now that we've completely cooled our lamb shanks off overnight we're gonna unwrap them we're gonna pull them out carefully so our braising liquid has congealed locking in all of that flavor and we're just going to pull these lamb shanks out and rest them on the tray here i think the kids over at the ronald mcdonald house are going to love these unique farm sent me uh spring lamb so it's not as gamey as uh as mutton mutton you're going to get that really gamey lamb flavor this is just gonna be a nice, subtle lamb flavor. I think our sauce after, we're gonna to wanna to reduce this down. Okay, now that we got the shanks out, we're gonna throw this on some heat and melt it down so we can strain it and make our sauce. Now that we have our braising liquid, heat it up, we're gonna strain it off 
we're going to add our reduced red wine. Throw in a couple of sprigs of rosemary. Crank the heat up and we'll reduce it. Okay, we've let this rest overnight. Now it's time to remove the weights and unveil our gratin potato. And make sure that it was cooked nicely. Okay. Looking good. Now we're just gonna measure it out and portion it up. So we're gonna go three inches tall by one and a half inches wide. Spin it around again. There we go. Beautiful gratin potato. Get all these brussels peeled up. So we're gonna blanch our brussels sprouts off. You want a big pot of boiling water and an ice bath ready to go. That way you can uh, toss your brussels into the boiling water and then cool them down immediately afterwards. Okay, we've got these beautiful heirloom carrots here. Uh, some white, orange, purple, and like a rouge color. Uh, we'll cut them up nicely and we'll maybe maple glaze them, maple butter glaze them for the dinner. Now that we've prepped everything, let's uh, run through our ingredients. Brussels sprouts, our heirloom carrots, our scalloped potatoes, and we got some mixed cheese to finish them off. Beautiful looking lamb shank, and of course, our sauce. Okay, let's start cooking everything here. Throw our rotan potato and our lamb shank into the sauce. We'll put these in the oven. Let's check on those items in the oven. Potato looks warm. Lamb shake looks nice and hot, Stevie, but let's just throw it on the heat for a second. While our shank's finishing up there, let's uh, gratin the cheese on top of this. A little bit of mixed cheese. We'll throw it in the salamander here. We'll put our Brussels sprouts into the deep fryer. Time we're gonna Heat up our carrots to get some butter. Carrots into the pan. Make sure to season it. And of course, in Canada, we drink the blood of our trees. It makes everything delicious. So we're gonna put a little bit of maple syrup on there. Get our Brussels sprouts into a bowl. Start, we're gonna put our gratin potato down. Carefully, it's very hot. Our shank. We're place our Brussels sprouts in there. These look great. Of course, our carrots. Our maple glazed carrots. And last but not least, a little bit of the sauce. A beautiful meal for the uh, families at the Ronald McDonald House. Ah, we are forgetting one thing the Malden salt. There we go. Dinner is served. That was quite the couple of days in the kitchen making these lamb shanks, actually. Um, but it's for a good cause. Uh, I hope to bring some happiness to the families at the Ronald McDonald House on Easter. Um, and to all of those people at home who are spending Easter without their loved ones around because they're self-isolating, cheers. Happy Easter. We're vlogging!
Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. hey gang. Hey YouTubers. Hey there YouTuber gang. It's uh, Chef Evan Outdoors here. Headed to work. <laughs> 